Last thing I want to talk about is the new Ragdoll Pose mode, which was added in Houdini 20.5. Now, this is very much still a work in progress kind of experimental feature. So we are going to use it here and sort of show how it was thought of and how it works. But do keep in mind that it's probably going to change still going forward. However, I still think there are some useful things that we could do with it already. Uh, we've used it for our shot and we'll explain a little bit how uh, we did that. So I have here a simple scene again with our classic little bot char stashed. I have just a simple box now for our prop and the CDAD prop that I talked about before and a scene animate. So this is all just vanilla, nothing added. And we want to go straight into Ragdoll Pose to see what we could do with it. So first things first is I'm going to go to Ragdoll so we can create our Ragdoll characters. And now, of course, if I play, we should expect some Ragdoll to happen, which is exactly what is the case. And now I can go even a step further than this. You can see it up here in the uh, HUD saying enter Ragdoll Pose mode. So if I click O or hit O on the keyboard, this takes us into Ragdoll Pose mode. Now, what you have to understand about Ragdoll Pose mode is that currently it leaves off of Ragdoll. So what that means is that it relies on Ragdoll to figure out what characters exist in the scene. But at the same time, it does maintain its own set of Ragdoll configurations, right? So that's why, for example, I just get the ground display off there. But now if I press O to go back to Ragdoll, you can see that the ground is back here. This is just so that we can sort of split the configs. If I want some configurations for my normal ragdoll and some other ones for my ragdoll pose, I can do that. But in terms of what characters exist, they, they all come from ragdoll, all right? So let me also get rid of that handle. So now I'm going to do a bit of a cleanup here. So I'm going to hide our little bot character so we can see our ragdoll character. And I'm also going to hide our box character so we can see our box ragdoll, okay? I'm going to go ahead and also hide the uh, box ragdoll, sorry, the box control over there. And now we can go ahead and play a little bit with this to figure out what it does. So by ragdoll pose, what we mean is that basically if I grab, for example, the I first turn on, click and drag, and then grab, let me also just hide the root so it's not in the way, grab the right control, a uh, right foot control. I can start moving this about, okay? So this is basically just posing, uh, nothing too fancy. But if I start to move this backwards and hit the box behind, you can see how our control goes through the box. However, our foot does not. It basically collides against the box. The moment I release, the control snaps into place and our foot snaps onto the surface of the box, all right? So this is, in a nutshell, what Ragdoll Pose is for. This is so that we can pose naturally as we would in the animate state, but have the Ragdoll run in the background so that we can get some nice collisions out of our posing. A couple of things to keep in mind is that we can see that our characters are all grayed out when we enter Ragdoll Pose. This is because by default, all of our shapes are set to inactive so that they don't move or we don't do anything to them at all. However, if I start moving a particular control, then its corresponding shape gets set to active, and that's why it, it is allowed to interact with the objects around it. Okay? So that's something to keep in mind. Another thing is that currently, you can see we already have a key, even though we haven't actually had hit K on this. Uh, currently, any control that is set to active will be keyed as we pose. This is so that we ensure that any sort of simulated um, data that we get out of the posing does not get lost. So for example, if I start to move the um, COG, you can see that that turns on the pelvis. If you remember, I've mapped the pelvis to the COG, so that's why that's the case. Uh, the, correspond the correspondence between the control and the shape is done via the mapping. So that's something to, to keep in mind. If I start moving the COG backwards, you can see that our helmet doesn't actually interact with the box, whilst if I push it further enough, you can see that our hip does interact with the box, all right? This is because our helmet is inactive by default, so it does not contrib contribute to the simulated step at all. And also, in consequence, we don't write any keys to its control. However, if I select the helmet, I come here and I just turn it active, 
and now I start manipulating the COG, you will see that our helmet now interacts with the box behind it. Okay? And at the same time, we also write the data onto the key uh, on the helmet control. Okay? So that's basically in a nutshell how the Ragdoll Pose works. If at any point, of course, where we want our helmet to stop being sort of uh, interacted with by the solver, we can just turn it back to inactive and the data has just basically stored itself onto our keys. So this is a tool to be used for posing. It's not a tool to be sort of as the Ragdoll is to be run over potential like just specific clips or, you know, ranges. This is a tool which you, let's say you, I'm posing my character, I just want this foot to go over and not go through the surface. I can just come into posing, do this, and I'm done. We just automatically write the keys out onto whatever active layer we have selected. So we can very easily just go back and forth without doing too much management in terms of where our data gets written to. Another example would be if we wanted to do something with the antennas. So for example, I could select my antennas over there and I'm going to turn them all to active. Okay, they, as you see, they also are uh, match local by default so that they sort of stick around a bit and they try to keep their uh, initial position. And now if I move the COG, you can see that our antenna starts to interact, sort of gets like remains behind a little bit, of course, because now the solver just basically runs uh, as we're posing. And we can also just push it backwards and it's going to interact with whatever is around it, right? So this is kind of a nice, uh, nice motion. The moment we release, they just get stuck in place and all of that data gets written out to the antennas uh, controls as well. Last thing I want to show you, just keep having a bit more fun because this is quite nice to, to play around with, is that we can also have, for example, the character uh, interacting with itself. So if I come here, select the COG, then I select the torso and I select the helmet and I can make all of them active. By the way, we can also select a control and configure our ragdoll from there. This is also very, uh, the case in the normal ragdoll mode. As long as the control has a mapping to the shape, i.e. to the skeleton for ragdoll, we can easily just use the controls to configure our ragdoll. It's just that with the shapes, we also get the visual sort of coloring so we know roughly that something has changed. So if I turn all of our character to uh, active and I, then I grab the leg, for example, and start rotating it or moving it around, you are going to see that we can have the knee interact with our body. We can even have the box. So if I select, if I come here to the box and get the control, it's a bit weird. It's, it's been positioned weirdly uh, at the origin. But that's okay, it doesn't really matter. For this example, uh, I can like lower the box, push it against our character, and that you can see uh, sort of squashes its helmet um, and torso, and we also get all that, that data written out. All right? So that's sort of Ragdoll Pose in a nutshell. Of course, we've got access to a bunch of stuff uh, that we do in the normal ragdoll. It's a bit more limited than the normal ragdoll because we don't actually care about like simulating over time, but all of these animated um, and like constant attributes are still here. So coming back to our setup with the animation that we just had to look at for getting the fall, let's see how ragdoll pose could be used, for example, in a shot like this, right? So we have this one, as you remember, we just did it. And now the obvious, use case for the ragdoll pose is every time we are dealing with a contact. So, you know, our robot, for example, slowly wakes up and then, you know, here pushes against the robot. We can see there's a little bit of an intersection there. Perhaps it's not as important for the that camera angle. Uh, you know, here as well and as well, there it is. So for example, you know, this kind of contact over here, uh, it's something that we did with ragdoll pose because it's just a lot easier to just get this nice contact uh, quite quickly. So let me show you how we would do that. I'm going to come down here and select my base animation. This is where our keys live for the, for the animation. So let me show you what I mean. If I select the foot, you can see that these are the keys, right? So 156 is where our foot sort of hits that surface. Okay. 
So I am going to come go to Ragdoll and just like fly through Ragdoll straight up and, and hit O to go to Ragdoll Pose. So here we can go ahead and turn off our character or our Ragdoll character, depends what we want to work with. I'm just going to work with the shapes because it's a bit easier to see the instant uh, feedback of the collision. I'm going to select, for example, the foot control and I'm going to move it around and you can see it interacting with the robot underneath. You know, I'm going to let it go and that will just snap into place. We can also rotate this around a little bit and that will still sort of interact with the, the shape underneath as well. So for example, if I come here and I rotate, we can see how it sort of hits against that robot and we just are getting a nice contact point uh, over there. The same could be said here. So for example, I could get the knee, move it around and that will just make it snap outside of the surface, which, you know, maybe in this case, I want it a bit inside the surface. Um, and yeah, I can very easily go through. I can, for example, select the next leg and figure out where the next contact point is, which is over here. Okay. So now I could come and rotate it a little bit, have it snap into place. And I'm also going to gently push it against that leg. There we go. So we get a nice contact over there as well. And I'm going to keep going forward. I guess this is a bit messed up right now because we have a lot of more, like more keys in between and stuff like that, but you get the point. So here the same thing. I can grab this, for example, and just move this into that robot and let it go. And that just gets that nice contact point, you know, and I mean, you get, you kind of get the idea. And then here it is like the jump It's the same principle where here is the key. Okay. So I can just grab this, move it up and push it down. There it is, proper contact, and then another one, so on and so forth. So that's what mostly, for, especially for this shot, but I think in general as well, is especially in its current state, think of the ragdoll pose mode as your kind of um, posing plugin that you want to go to just, you know, to get some contact points fixings. Get some, get some of your contact points fixed. Perhaps it can even be done as a pass. So you could animate in pose mode. And then once you get your keys in order and you're happy with it, you can come to pose mode and just get all those contacts fixed properly. So you get the whole range sort of uh, touched a bit before you start interpolation, etc., etc. So, you know, it has a lot of uh, applications, I would say, and you could use it in whatever way you want, but that's where it shines mostly. And of course, remember that it can also be used to, for example, you know, get uh, even more complicated contacts in. So for example, the last example I want to show you is if I come out here, where this character is kind of leaning against that robot right over there, I can have a look at my COG. And the COG was basically keyed here to be sort of to push against that robot. What I can do is I can get the helm so I'm going to go a bit back here, a little bit forward. I'm going to get the helm and the torso, and I'm going to set these to active. Okay. And now if I push, for example, the COG a little bit more towards the other character, we can see that we are getting a bit of the, uh, the helm and the torso sort of moving a bit to the side. So the contact is just nice and tight. On that on that front okay so stuff like this we can do um, but yeah again up to you up to you where this applies and how you would uh, you would want to use it so with all of that said I would like to thank you for your time I hope that you would find some pieces of this useful um, I think ragdoll is in a really cool spot in Houdini right now I think the future for it looks really promising and I'm honestly looking forward to seeing where it's going to go in the future. Thank you again and see you later. Bye-bye.